Hello my soccer universe, welcome to the review of the weekend's action in the Premier League and in the Eredivisie. As I did with my previous two this week, uh, Bundesliga and Serie A, very briefly some thoughts on what happened last uh, weekend and in the Premier League it only means the Liverpool Derby and you know I wanted to do I actually was looking forward to wear my Everton jersey for the first time on this channel, but I made another channel debut today with the Arsenal jersey for obvious reasons. Um, I really, and then I just couldn't do the video. I really was looking forward to do that. It was really, last weekend Premier League was all about the Derby and how Everton really, and I, I think I've wrote most of my, my thoughts very, very, very well in the montage video, but how Everton scored early, there was a short period of time where Liverpool probably could, could score, but it was really a routine performance by Everton. The penalty I really thought honestly was not a penalty despite them looking with Warren and so on, but I can see maybe Harding, but I think um, he just trips over or falls over. Uh, there, there was no foul. Um, so that was one one thing. And then, of course, the injury to Henderson. But I think that was for me the main takeaway and that, you know, uh, Everton, after losing at home to Manchester City, now beating Li uh, Liverpool, you, you could also see the Manchester City Liverpool are really at the moment going in opposite ways, opposite to what happened last season. And in the Netherlands, uh, PSV had a really big uh, win over Vitesse, which basically eliminated Vitesse and also Feyenoord dropping away so ahead of the big clash this weekend. It was uh, it was really a duel for the title, if you could say so, because Ajax is towering above the rest. And so yes, we go to this into this week um, and the headlines are clearly that uh, Ajax could ward off PSV in the Netherlands. We will start in the Netherlands. This one a crazy game between AZ and Feyenoord. And in the Premier League, I think the main story for me is uh, that Leicester again is losing, he's having an injury crisis. And for me, is Leicester, did Arsenal start another down, really uh, start another downward spiral for Leicester? The big clash between Chelsea and United, uh, there was some penalty controversy, but other than that, there was not much. And West Ham actually gave City a game, but maybe a little bit too late. I, I am. And Gareth Bale, is he back? Maybe not in the old way, but Spurs looking. <laughs> not that bad. Uh, but let's, as I said, let's start in the Eredivisie. Yes, we had some midweek games uh, with two draws, but I think the one between Groningen and Feyenoord is the one that uh, actually Feyenoord is also a downward trend, trending, um, which then led into the uh, week. And it was all about PSV Ajax, to be honest. And uh, unfortunately, we were visiting, so I couldn't really watch it. But from what I hear, it started out really en 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 entertaining with uh, early, uh, I think, a uh, PSV defender slid in to save uh, and hit the post uh, with a nice Ajax ru run up. And yes, Ajax played in the beautiful away jerseys. That's the best away jersey they had in a long time, I have to say. Personal opinion, of course. Um, and then uh, and there was, a, I mean, the highlights that I got, there were only three main scenes. And then a little bit after that, we will talk. Uh, Zahavi gets, there uh, was a freak at the edge, edge of box where Zahavi really nicely curls it in, as he did in the, uh, did he do it in the Europa League? I think he did. Um, to make it 1-1, 1-0 1-0 already. And that would be crucial for PSV to stay in the title race. Uh, they thought they got a second one, but there was a handball um, in the seven, in 78 and then um, just before, in the 990th there was a handball uh, in the box that had to be looked uh, for by, by VAR in the end of penalty and yeah, uh, then all the, how, how, how to say, mind games ensued where um, they tried to move the ball a little bit away to rough up the panel, pen, 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 the panel spot. Uh, Dumfries uh, calling out um, Tadic, who then scores and goes completely off. Uh, you know, he needed to be held back a lot. Uh, they were about to fight each other in the tunnel, and after the game, there were seemingly some coins thrown at Tadic and so on. Was not pretty. Was not pretty, but I get a 1-1, can fend off PSV and 
basically, it, I think this means the championship for Ajax. A PSV you needed to have had to win. Uh, the game between AZ and Feyenoord. Feyenoord took twice the lead in the first half. Twice Alkmaar comes back. And then uh, later on, uh, it was 4-2, uh, a penalty. But this was a game, I have to say, uh, the highlights were highly entertaining to watch. And probably the game was very entertaining, especially for the uh, first half, where Sinesi uh, and they say Sinistera gave the Bobadu twice equal because he gets a hat trick even to make it 3 2 before a cop minus penalty puts the game away. Uh, but yeah, I think that also puts Feyenoord into real trouble for Euro because uh, in the standings now, you can see Ajax. 98% winning the championship, I mean, six points ahead, with a game in hand, I think we can call the championship already. Um, PSV and that's it for the final uh, Champions League qualification spot, but you see uh, Feyenoord really dropping out, out, out of it and Vitesse even going ahead there. Uh, with games ahead, as I said, Ajax lead increases even more than Utrecht's uh, jump starts uh, 20, and in the expected table, yeah. As I said, PSV also over AZ, uh, probably. Um, and then, you know, the, uh, everything for this last European spot uh, will be interesting. Have in mind, and we'll uh, see now in the upcoming games, Vitesse might actually get a Europa League spot due to uh, if they go on to win the Cup. We have the Cup games in midweek, um, where Vitesse probably will make it uh, over Venlo, and I think Ajax would play against Herrenveen, and that would be the Cup final then. So interesting stuff there as well. And in the next round, I mean, after this big uh, round, not much there. PSV has to play at Zittert, Ajax against Groningen. This was this in the first leg. They um, were uh, um, they lost to Groningen. However, Vitesse against AZ, I think that's. Basically, one where uh, maybe Vitesse could claw themselves back, or AZ could put Vitesse out of the race for a potential Champions League spot as well. Let's go to England. Um, I think the most interesting game out of them all in many ways was Manchester City against West Ham. Uh, that was the top clash and West Ham really gave Manchester City uh, a game ahead. I think they even won the expected goals battle. Uh, and tellingly, Manchester City uh, scored both goals through the central defense Ruben Dias after the Bruyne assist. And uh, John Stones in the 68th gave Manchester City the, the win. Mikel Antonio can uh, just before halftime equalize. And as I said, um, yes, Manchester City was probably the overall better team, but West Ham played it nice and actually could have maybe gotten something from, uh, from Manchester City. Of course, Manchester City gets their 20th win in a row, which is a ridiculous uh, uh, tally. Uh, I mean, they many, many say, yeah, they are by far and out the best team. Uh, I think it also has to do that, um, you know, they have figured out how to play. And the competition is falling away with injuries and other troubles. And so it is easy, I think, for Manchester City to cruise to that title. Um, the unexpected, the most remarkable game was West Brom against Brighton. And it was all down to Brighton's really horrid non-converting of chances. Bartley gives West Brom a win. Uh, the win with an 11th minute goal. However, in the meantime, Brighton misses two penalties. One at the bar, one going to the post, uh, um, across and a uh, well back. And then a ridiculously non-called goal uh, by Dunk. He who wants to take the free kick fast, uh, and the referee whistles just before the ball goes over the line for no reason, and the goal is disallowed. It was one. It was one crazy goal, and I have to say again, that goal should have stood in Brighton. Brighton will win it, but Brighton does not win it. Brighton, who actually lost the big uh, M83 derby, although they don't want to have the cold. Uh, to um, Crystal Palace as well, and uh, the, the one thing I have to say it is both South Coast teams, Brighton and Southampton, not in good shape, but their managers are for some reason in high demand. So, very, very interesting there. Villa wins against Leeds United on a really crazy pitch to the three fifth minute goal uh, in the first leg. Uh, Leeds really. Uh, that was a great, great, uh, the great game uh, where Leeds won three 0 at Villa. Now uh, they lose one, uh, one 0 and Leeds kind of trending more to the bottom half of the table after a bright start. Now people have figured them out, and probably it's a little bit too demanding to play the Leeds style. Um, Leicester City Arsenal is the next one I want to talk about uh, because it was really 
you know, it's a sign of what things might happen to Leicester again, or maybe not. Hopefully, they lost again to Sparta Prague, um, which are uh, not Slavia Prague. That was a bad mistake uh, it, in, in the Europa League. But I have to say this might actually work in their favor because having those additional games with a, a squad that's already thin with injuries, I think this could work well for Leicester. Yuri Tielemans gives Leicester the lead who for most of the first half were the better team. However, uh, the Chelsea combination, William with a freak in, Luis ahead, had it in and then a penalty in the 45th. When in stoppage time, give Arsenal the lead at the halftime. Uh, the big break then comes the, when Harvey Barnes comes off with an injury and right into that right thereafter, Pepe scores and makes it 3-1. And Harvey Barnes is probably out for the rest of the season. Uh, one of those engine room workers for Leicester who were really in instrumental in their rise. And so Arsenal has a 3-1 lead, which probably can they can move into European spots but I have the feeling that Arsenal will try to go for something in the Europa League and you know having um, I mean you have to go past Olympiacos but you know it's not inconceivable that Arsenal will try to win this Europa League and Leicester will they do it like last season that they start up brightly and then they're falling off and on the last day I think they play Spurs on, on the last day that they fall out of it I really hope not because Leicester would fully deserve uh, on what they're showing but again injuries and squad depth that's uh, what is the undoing of Leicester and so we have to see Spurs I mean in November we talk about them being title contenders now they're down and out and suddenly they start like they end the streak with a rather positive display, especially with uh, Kane, Bale and Son combining. Son assisting Bale in the second minute and Bale assisting Kane uh, in the 15th and Lucas and um, scores a third before the halftime. Yes, it was only Burnley, but then uh, Gareth Bale gets a fourth, uh, a fourth goal for Spurs and a second one for himself again assisted by Son. We thought that Bale is a failure and now he suddenly uh, keeps showing up. I guess he got fit again. And that's, uh, you know, we're very critical, but, uh, you know, maybe this will turn on the Spurs engine again and we see going forward what will happen. Chelsea Manchester United, a very unremarkable, typical top six clash this season where there's nothing really happening. And except for a penalty call, they may or may not have uh, given a hands penalty. I... I've watched the scene once and I'm still not, not sure if didn't the United player touch with the hand first. It was not conclusive to me. What then, you know, Oli going off and because the referee seemingly said he didn't give the penalty because it would have caused too much trouble, which in itself is not good to say it that way, uh, if that ever happened. But, you know, if that's the only hang-up from that game, I'm sorry. Uh, it basically means the Manchester United uh, is now out of the title race themselves, as we'll see. Uh, Liverpool stops their losing streak with a 2 0 win at Sheffield United. Uh, John, uh, Jones and an own goal, although I think it was a uh, deflect. I think it was all Firmino that goal. Give a 2 0 win and Everton win yesterday at Southampton. Southampton. So, um, in the table, and you see Championship 100% Manchester City. There is no path uh, back 12 points clear ahead of the uh, with 12 points to go. That's pretty comfortable. I don't see anyone taking uh, taking over other than Manchester City. So it's all about the top four spots. And I have to say, although I mean Spurs at the moment looks out, but you know, I don't know about Everton, but I think it's really between uh, Manchester and I probably will be safe but um, Leicester City also look good because West Ham lost uh, Chelsea uh, was kind of fan fanned off Liverpool probably could get in if they uh, but you know also in intricate I also we have to see uh, I am doubtful I, I don't want to call it I actually think a Chelsea will go in there I think Chelsea is stable enough that they can get into the top four spots. And then we have to see whether Leicester and West Ham uh, can sustain their good run. In midfield, lots of changes. As I said, I don't think that Spurs will make Champions League um, unless they win the Europa League. So I, I think that the two London teams will uh, gone for that. On the bottom, Fulham, yeah, I think they might go in there and Newcastle will go down. I, Newcastle really does not look good at the moment. Uh, Brighton needs to be careful and Southampton, you know, they were in the top four uh, in November and now they are in, uh, 
deep, deep, deep downward spiral. So yeah, uh, adjusting doesn't do much. Uh, the only thing that we see that actually the biggest, uh, uh, the biggest outperform of their own expectations at the moment is Crystal Palace, followed by Everton and then Leicester City. Sheffield United still being a uh, very, very, very much a negative sensation. Uh, Arsenal, Brighton, and Liverpool also not very, very well performing. Expect the standings. I was surprised to see that suddenly Liverpool is back in the top four. I honestly cannot really, really see it at the moment. Uh, Chelsea out. I actually. If you would ask me, I think potential wise Liverpool, yes, but um, it's a hard road back. But who knows? Very well we go. Also Spurs only finishing in 7th and Arsenal only in 10th. Not looking good. There has to be some revamping done as well. And then yesterday when I made the calendar for the next round the evening, um, we just had round 26. So the next round, midweek, we play a little bit of round 29. Uh, you see up until Liverpool Chelsea that will I think that game is a big one in deciding who will end up in the top four because those are two challengers um, so that is an odd thing because the other rounds are then played later and Spurs against Southampton is for now postponed uh, we also have a game from round 33 between Fulham and Spurs go figure why round 33 I don't understand it I always knew that English scheduling is crazy but this one I really cannot understand at all um, and then we have round 27 which you know after round 26 there should be round 27 where we have the Manchester Derby uh, which probably United. Should probably get a point out of that. However, we'll have to see. We also have Chelsea Everton on Monday, uh, which could also go a long way in deciding where thing, things are going uh, for a top four spot, potentially. But yeah, City Manchester United, it seems like not that much of a big deal at the moment, to be honest. Well, do you agree with me? Anyway, let me know what you thought about uh, this week in the Premier League and in the Eredivisie. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing and clicking the little bell icon so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. With that, have a wonderful day! Bye!